A hundred or so Grenadier Guards returned from Afghanistan last night to something of the sort of welcome the Chief of the Defence Staff would like all returning soldiers to receive. He says the British public has too little understanding of what active service means. The Grenadiers, for example, have lost five men killed in the last 12 months. To give us some idea of what Afghan service is like, the video journalist Vaughan Smith, a former Grenadier himself, joined a group of them given the job of mentoring part of the Afghan National Army. You'll hear them referred to as the ANA. They were on an operation to clear a section of the upper Sangin Valley. It was the first time the ANA had been integrated into a British battle group attack. Here's what happened. So you're driving light? As light as I can, <laughs> which isn't that light. When do you expect to be back? Um, well, we sort of told two to four days, but... Uh, uh, could be long, could be long. Generally always is. How many, how many grand is? Just four of us. Just so we take out the 24 uh, A&A, yeah. uh, four mentors, uh, which is myself, the platoon sergeant, the sniper and the section yeah. commander. Oh, you've got to put safety catch, sir. What? Safety catch. Well, 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 okay, big girl. Safety catch. Safety catch. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Shoot me. Fucking bomb you. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> the ANA is the Afghan National Army. Much as we have in one of our battalions, they have a number of companies. A uh, company equates to around about 120 men. An operation came in to clear the area sort of north of Sangin where they believe the Taliban had re-infiltrated after a number of other clearance operations. So we were assisting the Royal Anglians and A Company Royal Anglians in clearing through the green zone in, in the Sangin area, the north Sangin area, using an ANA platoon to, to assist them. One of the first times an ANA platoon had been embedded with a British rifle company. See lots of it, fields and fields of it to be honest. Um, but as you say, our main effort isn't to get rid of the drugs at the moment, it's uh, to, to try and get rid of the Taliban. But nine times out of ten, where you find these uh, these fields of cannabis and uh, the poppy fields, <laughs> is uh, where you find, that, find the Taliban. <laughs> It's, it's almost like jungle. Uh, it's very, very close country. Um, all the crops, certainly this time of year, are very high. So you've got uh, corn and maize that's eight foot high. Um, where you haven't got those, you've got tree lines, very thick tree lines, um, deep irrigation ditches, uh, long grass, it really is uh, like jungle. <laughs> Uh, who was the bloke being carried across the river? That was uh, the commander of the uh, the A and didn't want to get his feet wet, so he carried him across. Luckily, he was only a little bloke. <laughs> Yeah, 
to come here, come here. Explain to all these here now, right? Yeah. Do not fire because we've got friendly forces going into that compound directly in front of us. Okay, let them know there. Tell them not to fire. Why is good? I'm done firing. I'm making it. The forward platoon come into contact. They was getting engaged from three different firing points. We'd gone forward. We was the rear platoon. What we're doing here now, as the reserve as well, we're also looking out for any Taliban that are trying to extract. They've got trenches running in different directions. They usually have three to four different trenches running away from the compound where they're firing at us from. Alright. Yeah, jump down here. Stay down here, I'll stay to the side so we're gonna. Big boys can Don't wanna stay dry anyway. Yeah. It's gonna go for a swim later. Yeah. Got a fire point. for 715 more on job. He's my interpreter. Uh, they're known as Turks to us uh, on the ground. Uh, without them, there was no, we would have no communication with the ANA. Sneaky, just time to relax, all right. Time to calm down, all right. They're not going to be yet. They're not going to be getting used for a while. You just tell them to stay in cover, and keep relaxed. The ANA get very excited because they know the Taliban, that Taliban are about. They're getting shot at by it, and then they want to go. They just really want to go, and it's it's like trying to keep the re pull the reins on the horse to hold them back. You've got to control them at this point, otherwise you can have, have a few problems. Once you've sort of got them controlled, it's just waiting out to find out where we need to be deployed to. Then you can sort of unleash them and let them go. Just down the river. Keep fucking down. Right, Jim. A section of Royal Anglians are pushing forward uh, onto the bank of the river so they can provide uh, flank protection to allow us to push past them so they get ready to assault the enemy. Fix bayonets! <coughs> The Afghan farmers sort of live in highly walled compounds. You've got walls perhaps 12 to 15 foot high. They're very thick. There's nothing as hard as a compound wall, but it really is tough stuff to get through. It's, it's got to be stronger than reinforced concrete, and it's just made out of uh, mud uh, that's baked in the sun. It's a fucking RPG, mate. That's close that, wasn't it? Okay, who's up there with the boss? Just the section commanders? Yeah, yeah, Barry. Alright, yeah. uh, the company had patrolled throughout the whole whole night and um, by the time of the morning it came we were still going and still walking through deep irrigation ditches. We hadn't had a chance to eat anything at this stage and it was probably around about 8 o'clock in the morning when we got contacted so we weren't likely then to stop for the rest of the day. So it was going to be a very long day. Widow 8-2. So he deals with locating the enemy positions. Once they've been located, he passes that information up to the aircraft, whether it be fast air or attack helicopter, uh, and they come in and deal with the position and take it out. Uh, I believe I'm going to have to move very shortly. Let's go, Ellis. Platoon assaulted the compound. To do that, they have to use an explosive charge to gain entry into it because the walls are so thick. So they put the charge against the wall, blow a hole in the wall, and then move through that and in to clear the compound. Okay, now they've cleared, secured that right flank. And we've pushed down this tree line, uh -huh. and um, you've got another two compounds down there to, uh, to then go in and clear. Okay, but just uh, gives you an idea of what. Rather than just go into the enemy here, what we're going to do is punch down 
this this compound line here to try and encircle them. I come forward to get the brief from the company commander as to what and how they wanted us to attack the Taliban position uh, using the Afghan infantry. Here. Just to our left, behind this compound, we've been engaged RPG and uh, small arms, and uh, the uh, Apaches have finally decided to open up after flying around doing nothing as usual. We believe there was a Taliban tree sentry in there. We're taking quite a bit of fire from it. Steady now, Come here, sneak in. The helicopter's fired through sheds. Airburst, airburst. They need to be in cover. We're all right here, are we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're all there, we're all there. <laughs> so we're, we're in cover, we're trying to locate the position where we're taking the fire from and then had we done that we would have called up the sniper to take him out but uh, we were lucky enough to have the uh, Apache attack helicopter on call so that came in and helped us out a little bit. The Taliban are very good at uh, trying to create a, a sort of 360 degree battle and as they see us moving forward, um, if we're slow, then they'll start to come round to the flank and, uh, and try and induce the flank contact. The ANA spotted it and as they, as they do, as soon as they spot Taliban, they want to go in for the kill and they start it putting fire down on them. Also the, the Apaches in the air have identified that we had Taliban activity in this compound. We eventually got to the compound. Um, this is the compound where we were taking fire from, heavy fire. With the ANA, we have to lead first. Until the ANA gets to know you, then they'll start leading and start going in first. I took the platoon across uh, the ground. It was open ground and it was about 100 metres of open ground. The Taliban were in depth. We took a little bit of fire from them, but not much. Uh, and it, we were able to get the whole platoon across and into the, uh, into the cover of the compound prior to moving up to carry out an assault in a depth position. The, uh, the Taliban know, or they guesstimate, which way we're going to attack the compound. They'll, they'll put padlocks on the doors and they'll barricade the door so we can't gain entry that way, which will then give them more time to extract. Taliban are known to set booby traps. We've been on patrolling now for approximately 18 hours, so it's important that we keep on top of them at this stage and make sure they're aware of all threats to us. Right, that's this one clear. That's clear, yeah. yeah. Okay, clear. We've got two more huts behind there, look. Let's so have a look around now, see if we're going to identify any bodies. But you don't see many? No, not, not really. The Taliban usually get rid of them quite quickly. Oh, really? What, they're dead? Yeah, and injured. We knew for a fact that they must have been in and around the area, so we did a quick search of the, uh, the possible routes to which they would have took. But as we got in there, there were signs of blood trails on the floor. Can we can we ask them to put it in a bag so we can just give it to company commander, basically, when we get back? So. Company commander. But there's no sign of the body? No. Just run away. 
the ANA found two waistcoats from the Taliban with identification in there. That's fresh as well, isn't it? Unless he wants to keep it fresh as well. I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> oh no, as soon as I go to sleep, someone will start shouting me for something. <laughs> Mara, Mara, eh? Oh, yes, do you want to see some around? When you sit down and have five or ten minutes, you, you, it all sort of comes sort kind of of now, flooding yeah. down to you, how tired you are. And especially, it's, it's stressful because you're dealing with the Afghans and you're working a lot harder to maintain your own safety as well as trying to deal with, with, the, with the problem because the Afghans don't have the same concerns about their personal safety, perhaps, as we do. And because of that, it's a lot more stressful. Better put my helmet on, because if my missus does see this DVD, she'll kill me. She's not like me not having my helmet on. She's like my mum sometimes. Getting the fuck is moving out now. We've got to go and fucking deal with this. Well, you can read more about Vaughan Smith's time in Afghanistan and his own blog via our website.